Howdy! This marks the first episode of my skinning tutorial series. In this series, I will be going over almost everything that has to do with skinning, of course. The first episode is an introductory video. These are done in collaboration, well, all these videos are done in collaboration with Rockroller and his tutorial post on the forum. So, of course, shout out to him and show him some love on the forum. Keep in mind that this is the introduction. The in-depth tutorials will come sometime after this. We gotta get some of this stuff set in stone, so. Let's begin with the general introduction. To begin skinning, you're going to need an editor. This can be done with absolutely anything as long as it supports transparency. Some popular options are Photoshop, GIMP, and Paint.net. The latter half are free. Anyways, it really doesn't matter which one you choose as it's all preference, but if you're going to go with Paint.net, you're going to need some plugins that you can find in the description below. Alright, so once you've got your editor, go ahead and take a look at the skinnable files list listed in the description below. And also note that everything here is in SD, so we'll get into that later. Alright, so this list is as it says, it's every skinnable file in OS. So just also remember it only has the basic information on the file and does not actually tell you how you can achieve certain things. For that, you need to look at other people's skins. You can also do this for inspiration. And if you're looking for inspiration, check out the completed skins compendium. And also while you're there, check out some other posts such as the important guides and threads post. There's a lot of helpful stuff in there. Another thing that would be a huge help is the template of the default skin, which you can use to practice editing and, you know, just use it as a template. This can be found in the description below. For any additional help, you can always ask on our tutorial post in the forum, or you can check out the Skin House and Too Fast Dan Discord servers, or even just post on the Oskins Reddit. With the editor and the skinnable files list out of the way, you're going to need a concept or just a general idea of what you want to do. If you're lacking one, I'm sure you can ask around and quickly find something that someone else would like skinned. If it's not your cup of tea, then you can just open up your editor and dick around. I can't tell you how many times that's actually how I've come up with stuff in my videos. Some of the effects I use in my videos I just came up with by messing around. If both of these don't work for you, maybe check out some other skins and get inspired. With a general idea in mind, it's time to consider a few things. The first is, do I have the skills necessary to produce efficient results? And the second being, are there enough resources? So the first is actually very, very crucial. If you don't have the practice, then you're going to end up frustrated and at a creative end. It's a lot better to practice by editing existing elements before hopping straight into creating a new element. Trust me on this one. The second one mainly concerns anime skins. There has to be good enough artwork of your character, unless you can draw. Taking screenshots from the anime is meh at best, just due to the low quality the screenshot will yield. So it's best to research some art beforehand. With those out of the way, it's time to begin working on your concept. This should include a rough idea of your color palette, a font, the direction in which you want to take, and background art if needed. If you're doing a character skin, you will need images, sounds, and anything else pertaining to your character. Finding a render would also be ideal, but we'll do more on that in a later video. There are HD and SD elements. HD elements are used on resolutions with at least 800 pixels in height. If they are included in the skin, of course. If not, the SD images replace them. HD elements end with at 2x in their name, and are exactly double the size of SD. If you play on a resolution lower than 800p, you can actually force your host to load HD elements. You can do this by just going into your host skin folder, finding your pcusername.config file, find the high resolution option, and set the option to 1. Please note that on a weaker system, this does increase your load as you are using higher resolution images. Anyway, this method can be used to skin in HD even though your resolution is lower than HD. You can change this back at any point if you desire by just changing the 1 to a 0 or just removing the 1 entirely. Always remember to skin in HD. Upscaling SD images to HD will not yield any benefits, and it's best to make the HD element first and then downscale it. To make your life easier, just skin everything in HD, then use the image scaler by Rowan to downsize everything at once, saving you loads of time. The link of course in the description below. Now on to aspect ratio. While the resolution doesn't really matter for the skin, the aspect ratio is really important. 
some elements will need to be adjusted depending on the aspect ratio and you really need to pay attention here because it does stretch your elements. I recommend you skin for 16x9 to 16x10 as they are by far the more used um, aspect ratios. We'll cover how to convert a 16x9 skin to a 16x10 to skin in the future but we won't do anything for 4x3 as the ratio is way too annoying to work with and it's got its own really stupid rules and yeah no thanks dad. All images have anchor points, as stated in the skinnable files list. Every image, text, and in-game element will be on its own layer. Remember this later because you'll need to understand how it works. Anchor points listed in the spreadsheet tell you how they will be spread, but you will also need to consider where the image is placed in the client, and here are three examples of anchor points. Alright, so lastly, I'll go ahead and give some closing tips. Some you may know, but some you may not. Every time you change an element, you're going to have to reload the skin. This can be done by holding Ctrl, Alt, Shift, and S and O's, or by resetting your client. Things like welcome message will have to have a client reset, while things like hit circles and cursors do not. Learn to work with layers, as they make your life way easier. Save your work file and not just the PNG aka the PSD, PDN, or XCF. This is going to help you if you have to go back and change something. Some elements have different blend modes and origin points. They will always be listed on the skinnable files list. If you're going to use someone else's element, like a health bar, cursor, etc, you could only even use one thing in your skin, like the cursor. If you do this, it is a mixed skin and it is not allowed on the O skinning form at all. If you choose to release it somewhere, you could release it on Reddit, but you should give proper credits to whoever made the element. With everything out of the way, that is it for the first episode, or the introduction rather. Uh, big shout out to Rock, he was collaborating with me on this entire thing, and in the future we are still keeping this up. Uh, he's making the form post, and I'm making the video part, and he's making sure that I have my information correct. And yeah guys. I really hope you guys do enjoy this series. Um, I'm going to be working very hard with it, and I can assure you Rock is going to be working hard as well. And uh, we're both really looking forward to it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.